Today's message from Rev. Christian Sorensen was recorded February 12, 2017, and it's titled, God Comes Through the Wound. The affirmation today is, I bring love to all aspects of my life. And today we welcome the talent, voice, and grace of Peggy Lebo, who if you go to their website at joyouspodcast.com, you can find the link to her information on Facebook. Come visit us at seasidecenter.org sometime. You can join us in Encinitas, California, where we always have great music, a spirited message, and a joyful, loving community that awaits you. Good morning again, Seaside. So, we're very, very blessed to have this wonderful vocalist, wonderful piano player, wonderful songwriter. She is no, she is no stranger to Seaside. She's been here several years and truly at home at Seaside. So we're very, very blessed to have the beautiful and talented Miss Peggy Lebo. So give her a good God bless you. Seaside welcome, Peggy Lebo. Good morning. It's good to be home. This feels like home to me.
That is our sister, Peggy Lebo, who has been here not only a few years, but more than a couple decades. So I think you're running around in diapers when you started, right? <laughs> yeah, so we'll keep that story going. That's right. Whatever we say here, it's so, right? So thank you. That was just be love will lead the way home, which is perfect for this Valentine's Day message. Um, as you know, the, all the centers for spiritual living across the country are using the same title for Sunday morning. And so this one is God Comes Through the Wound. And I looked at it and thought of that. You're kidding me. On Valentine's Day? <laughs> Wounds? Relationships? Man, I don't know if I want to go there or not. <laughs> But, you know, I started thinking about it, you know, it's like, and, and came across this wonderful Rumi uh, quote, and um, he was this 13th century Persian poet, uh, Muslim intellectual scholar, and, and he said that the wound is the opening through which the light comes. Got that? The wound is the place where the light comes. It, it comes into our experience. And so, you know, we're living in an in a undeniably turbulent Time. There is great disruption, uh, uh, unsettling uh, challenges that are going on on our planet, whether it's environmental, whether it's exploitation, whether it's governance in various spots around the planet. There is definitely something that is stirring, and uh, I, I know there's people who just want to turn off, turn away, and uh, just don't want to take a look at the hatred or the anger or the hostility or the challenges that are going on out there, and even inside of our own being, inside of our own self. But I want to remind us that when there is so much turbulence, turbulence and turmoil and the energy that is going, it is a great time for change. It is in these turbulent times that is the greatest opportunities for shifts to take place in consciousness and begin to demonstrate themselves out there in the world in which we live. And so these times are calling for us to step forward. Now, more than ever before, the world needs you to step into a higher consciousness. More than ever, it is time for us to accelerate the process of our transformation, our healing, and our awakening. More than ever, it is time for us to awaken and stay awake. More than ever, it is time for us to choose love in the midst of whatever is going on in our life and in our world. And so this concept, I hate to break the news to you, but it's not mine. <laughs> you know, this concept of going to the heart and feeling the love, it goes way back. I mean, you, you read the sacred texts, you read the mystics who wrote in those sacred texts, and they're all talking about that heart space. And that heart space that we're talking about is not this thing that pumps in our heart, but rather it is an energetic energy. It is a vibration of love, of spirit. And, um, you know, the Zohar, the, the literature for the Kabbalah, says that God is concealed from the mind, but is revealed to the heart. The Baha Gavita says, I am the self-seat of all hearts, of all creatures. In Matthew, it talks about, uh, blessed are those that are pure heart, for they shall see God. Uh, the Buddha said, the way is not in the sky, the way is in the heart. See, the, the love energy, we're reminded that, you know what, that there's something that we need to turn to within our life. Uh, uh, Henry David Thoreau talked about that uh, the only path to heaven on earth is love. I mean, that's the path. You can't love too much. I mean, all these guys and gals are telling us you can't love too much no matter what is going on. If you can just remember in all things love, and when there is a pain and when there is a wound and when there is a mistake, can I choose to remember to know that there's a light that wants to come through and you can call it love and you can't love too much. I've heard people say, oh, I love too much. True love you can't give too much of. You know, that, that true love is multiplied and it returns blessings back to you many times over. You become that place in which it moves and then let your heart shine and don't allow your heart that is the light that is shining to be covered by the mind. 
Because the mind may start calculating here. You know, if I give this, I want that. You know, it's no longer uncontrolled, uh, unconditional love. It is more like uh, manipulating things a little bit or, or, you know, even calculating revenge. If I don't really get what I want, then I got this energy going on inside of me. So how can I get back? You know, and, uh, uh, you know, revenge. The Chinese say if you're planning revenge, you might as well dig two graves. You know, it, it just doesn't work like that. If you want to overcome the challenge... I'd love to go to Martin Luther King's line at this time. It's Black History Month, season of nonviolence. It's perfect time to quote him. And that is, darkness cannot dispel darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot get rid of hate. Only love can do that. Only love can do that. Only love can be that. And so what is love? Well, where is it? Is your passion? What is it? that brings you joy. I'll tell you what, you do that which brings you joy, and that becomes your shortest route between where you're standing now and your dream and where you want to go. If you're following your bliss, or as Joseph Campbell would say, if you're following your heart, if you're following your love, all of a sudden time begins to disappear and it becomes the shortest distance from where I'm standing to bring forth a dream, to bring forth the possibility, to bring forth the the greater expression. I know that spirit is able to show up in in life in a way that is grand and glorious and right, and it, it is going to move through me in this moment. And as I begin to be that place in which that spirit is moving, what happens is there is like a a, a recalibration that goes on. You know, there's a repatterning of the self that takes place. And what that manifests into is, um, is delight, is uh, passion, compassion, creativity, uh, caring, uh, um, joy. That's how it shows up in our life when I choose to go there. And all of a sudden things begin to stir in the life and the world that are just magical and wonderful. And you feel better. You're empowered. When you realize that right there, the wound, the light's coming through, and I want to be that place in which spirit expresses, and I know whatever comes my way is mine to do. Like I said, no time more than now, you're needed. Um, you might remember the story is a few years back about uh, Wesley Autry. He was a guy who was on the Manh- waiting for the Manhattan uh, subway to come into the station, and just as the train was pulling in, uh, a young man next to him went into an epileptic seizure and fell into the tracks uncontrollably, and without thinking, Wesley dove into the tracks, grabbed this young kid, covered him with his body because the train couldn't stop. It was too close, and the train went over, to ev- over them. They were like right in the gutter between the two rails, and as the train pulled past them, everybody was just surprised to watch both these young men sit up and they were okay. I mean, it came so close that Wesley's ski cap had grease on it. It it, it was um, was that close. And what was interesting about the story later on when NPR was doing an interview with Wesley, he shared that just a couple years earlier, he was held up at gunpoint by a thug who pulled the trigger and it didn't fire. And it was in that moment that he loved life like he had never loved it before, you know? There was something inside of him that felt that, you know what? Uh, there's something that's still mine to do for this I was saved for. There's something I, I need to do, and maybe this was it. All of a sudden, when we choose to come from love, rather than getting mad at the thug or the challenge or the difficulty or the disruption in the world or in our life or in our experience, say, how is it intended for greater good? How am I intended to be after moving through this kind of experience? The choice comes back to me. Now, Callie and I are kind of late in seeing movies because we have a son. And, um, uh, and so going out to movies is not what parents get to do a lot of in those earlier days or actually for a while. Anyway, we, we just, I was trying to say just this week we saw Sully. It was on TV, so we watched Sully. You know, uh, what, Chesley Sullenberger, the third airline pilot of U.S. Airways, you know, Airbus 320 that take, took off from New York's LaGuardia and uh, ran into a bunch of birds, had the bird strike, took out both of his engines, and the plane, only place it had to land was on the waters of uh, the Hudson in January freezing cold. And the part of this story that really touched my heart, I mean, all that's really good, but the, the part that really stuck with me is the way in which people responded. I mean, you know, Sully, he, he, after everybody was off the plane, he went and walked down the aisle to make sure all 150 souls and his five crew members were out safely, and then he came out. 
And then after he came out, all the ferry uh, boats started coming and their crews started saving the individuals that were there. And then the police came and the Coast Guards flew over and the fire department there. And within 20 minutes, everyone was taken out of the icy river of January and taken to safety. And what stuck with me is that is the spirit that is inside of us when there is a challenge, when there is a wound. There is something inside of us that wants to respond and does respond when we are called to, if we're choosing to listen to that soul that is stirring inside of us. There is something inside of you that gets regenerated, invigorated, revitalized when you say, yes, spirit, use me. And then you have the courage to go be used, to march if you're called to march, or to walk, or to dance. You know what? And when that energy is moving through, it probably keeps you younger anyway, <laughs> is what I figure. And, you know, maybe that's why they say, you know, the, uh, 40 is the new 30, 50 is the new 40. And keeping in that theme, I've come up with a new one, which I think Thursday should be the new Friday. What, what do you think about that one? But what I want us to get is that anything's possible. You know, and when there's a challenge, there's a saying that says our extremities are God's opportunities. It's the opportunity to bring forth spirit into manifestation, into form, into expression. And you're the conduit. You're the vortex. You're the channel. You're the pipeline. You're the transparency. You're that place. More than ever, you are needed now. Your higher consciousness, your greater believing that, you know what, I'm not going to be sidetracked by the distress or the challenges. I'm going to hold a vision that is greater because you know, the potential is everywhere, always. Got that? The potential is everywhere, always. Always there is that opportunity for a greater experience here. Always there is an opportunity for the greater vision to manifest no matter what it is you're going through. Always there is the potential. Science calls it um, energy. The energy is always potential in its expression. I I choose to call it spirit. Um, Call it what you will. What's imperative is that you get it. And that you realize that there is an energy or a life force or an essence or something that is available that that stirs. When you experience love inside of you, what it is, is that life force rising. That life force, that energy that rises inside of you. Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from within. And, And it's rising out of that something that is within you. You know, like the ocean, you know, we got oceans. Boy, do we have ocean. And, um, in the ocean, when it's calm and it's placid, it's nice, it's a lake, it looks good. And all of a sudden, a wave begins to rise, and we've got the wave that is rising. Now, there, there's no more extra water in the ocean than before the wave, right? But it looks bigger, it looks nastier, it looks like something's going on there. Something's happened. But I want us to realize that there's no more extra water in the ocean when the wave is rising. It may just appear that way to us. What I want us to get is the energy or that life force always is. And when that love energy or that life force is rising in us, it's not coming from anywhere. We are already residing within the allness of that energetic expression of spirit, and it is rising inside of us. Get the analogy? Oh, good, good, good. I, I just want to be clear that because a lot of a lot of times people want to think, you know, I get love out there from that person. You know, they they just like turn me on, and I get it. It's good, you know. Or, um, you know, it's like I get this uh, special bottle of love potion. You know, I take every day, or I, I share it with somebody, or there's this hose that just or a transfusion. I, I don't know what it is we think that love is, is coming to us, but too often people are waiting for people to bring that love into their life. And I get that we have um, wave activators in our life who, yeah, their touch is good, or, or the, the, the talk, but you know what? It is coming from within. If you think of all the relationships you have ever been in, you know, wonderful or horrible, the love has come inside of you. They may have activated it, The love has been there the whole time. That life force just hasn't risen until that particular moment. We so often get busy waiting for that right person to come along and so we can get it. Or we wait so we can do this great experience so I can feel the love. Or I I wait for something to happen so I, I can feel the love. That's not where it's at or what it's about. 
It is about doing, allowing that spirit to be activated within our own heart and, and being and allowing that to come through the wound, the challenge, the disruption, the unsettlement, or the whatever is going on. And realize that in the moment of the wound or the challenge, it is the greatest time for opportunity and for change to take place in our life or in the world or whatever is, is going on. But I'm the one who's got to hold the vision of that greater possibility, even if I've blown it. <laughs> You've blown it too, huh? <laughs> And it's like, it happens. You know, we're doing this thing called life. And with that, there's been some faux pas that we have made, maybe some real bad ones, and our heart just holds on to it from early on. You know, we've been taught about guilt, and I hold on to this guilt. And You know what? The heart, um, even if your heart has uh, that, that hurt or the guilt or the confusion, or the constraint. I, Ernest Holmes, he's the founder of religious science, and he writes in his book, The Science of Mind. He said that um, the heart, your heart, if it has the guilt or the pain, remember the spirit that gave you the heart is greater than the gift. The spirit that gave you the heart is greater than the gift. And if you've got pain going on there at that core center of your being, there's something greater. That is the grace of God that enters into this picture. And sometimes letting go of what it is I did or you did or, or, or what somebody did, it's hard. But forgiveness isn't a rational, logical, sequential kind of action. It's a mystical alchemy of the soul and the spirit that incorporates something that is greater than a logical mind that wants the revenge and doesn't want to dig two graves, just wants to get them. And the heart is holding and hurt from that, but there's something that is greater that wants to move into your world and that can overcome anything and everything. That's big. You know, Anita Majani, who's coming to Seaside, you know, uh, Oprah you know, as one who really made her, her famous Wayne Dyer found her. She's, she's, um, the young woman who is fighting cancer for four years in the hospital bed, finally died. Machines showed her organs just shut down and, um, lacerations within her body. And, and I mean, all this is documented. And, um, all of a sudden something shifted and she came back and her organs started turning back on the lacerations. They watched them go back to, miraculously witnessed them, you know, healing up before their eyes. And then a week she was out. Within months, there was no sign of cancer left in her body. And so she wrote this book, Dying to Be Me. She's coming here um, end of March. We want to be here for sure. But I want to share with you that somebody asked her, do you feel that your faith is the source? Do you feel your faith in the source was a factor in your healing? Okay, we deal a lot with faith, right? So is faith the factor in the source? I love her answer. In my experience, I became the source. That there was total clarity. There was no source outside of my own expanded awareness. It felt as though I encompassed totality. As I've mentioned, no faith in anything was needed for my healing because in that state, there's total clarity. And it felt as though everything became known. Belief or faith gave way to a knowing. It seemed that I became everything. I existed in everything, and it all existed within me. I became eternal and infinite. That's pretty cool. <laughs> we work so much on faith, but you know what? You don't need faith when you are experiencing the totality of it all. When you become that place where spirit is and there is nothing else, healing happens in the ways that are relevant to your life. I don't need to magically conjure up and say, heal this. So that's fun. <laughs> um, it's my job, you know. Um, but the easier way, I don't know if it's easier, but the way is you become that which is. You know, and the nature of God, which people have been asking forever, and I, I don't know if I can really bring clarity to that, but I can say if God is not infinite, you know, if God is not um, eternal, immortal, if God is uh, not omnipresent or omniscient, all-knowing, you know, omnipotent, you know, the, the only power, then God is not God. Does that make sense? If God's not those things, then it's not God. Some of you, yeah, that means yes, that means no. Okay. 
Maybe you're not tracking with me. I, I, I don't know. But, but if God is that, those things, if God, if God is, is that, then I, what I want us to get is there is no power outside of that. There is no otherness. There is only the totality, which Anita was speaking about, all of a sudden the challenges and difficulties that are in this world, and they are in this world. There is the human experience, and there is some nastiness, and there is some evil, and there is some sickness that goes on on this human plane. But what is is on that spiritual plane, the, the absolute plane, that infinite plane, that place that is omnipotent, is the only power. There is no struggle. There is no pa- battle. There is the flow of spirit that will move in into your life through the hands of doctors or through wonderful uh, creative expressions or in relationship, the Spirit will move into our life through the various modalities in which we have chosen to play and see the presence of God showing itself. It's not as if there is God and something else. First commandment I talked about last week, don't put any other stuff before me. It's Spirit, period. You cannot not no English teachers here, right? <laughs> well, Greg, um, I'll take your red pen after the service. <laughs> you cannot not be part of the whole. You cannot not be part of life or source if it's everything. You cannot not be that which creates love. You're one with that life. You're one with that flow. And as you begin to take a look at the biggies or the wounds or the challenges in your life, allow those to become your places of spiritual practice. Okay, you got something going on in your world? Something unsettling? Allow that to be the place of your spiritual practice. Well, you know what? I'm going to step up to a new place. Because I'll tell you, when you begin to look at those biggies in your life, or or at least when I look at the biggies in my life, sometimes I just want to run and hide. I, I I just want out. I'm frightened. I just want to go hang out in my cabin in the woods of the mountains of Montana and just say, that's it. Call me when it's over. But Callie won't let me. <laughs> but then there's a courage that begins to kick in. The conviction. That is the power. That says, I am willing to do whatever it takes. Can you say that? I am willing to do whatever it takes. One more time. I am willing to do whatever it takes. And when you are, I'll tell you what, you're a miracle. You are a walking miracle, and you will touch more people than you'll ever begin to realize just by being who you are. Not something you're not, but following that which is your passion and your delight, which becomes the shortest distance to that, to your dream and your vision manifesting in your world. When you're willing to do what it takes in your life to be that and to bring that into those areas, you're willing to march, you're willing to dance, you're willing to love, you're willing to speak the truth, you're willing to be honest, you're always going to be in integrity of what it is you are doing. And what happens is people will see you, and you will touch people you don't even know you're touching. You will... Uh, incite action in places in the world you don't even know are responding to that love vibration that is taking place. And do you know why this is such a special day? What makes this a special day? You do. You are the most precious, beautiful, magnificent, wonderful person there is. And your gifts, and that which you do makes a difference and is special in the world in which we live. And the sun, it it rises over your head. And the earth, it kisses your feet. And I love you for who you are and what it is you're doing. And the, the walk and the march and the dance that you're doing in this world is making a difference. And Albert Einstein said... Remember above all things your humanity. Oh, one billion
absolutely fabulous, the Seaside Sisters. Under the direction of Callie and Reverend Lori. Welcome here from the album Path of Light 
was co-written by Peggy Lebo and Rev. Christian Sorensen. It's available at www.peggylebo.com.